Ikhoshi cha bobedi chapter 2 from verse 15 What do I verse 15 mola When the sons of the prophets who were watching opposite at Jericho saw him they said the spirit of Elijah Amen rest on Elisha Amen and they came to meet him Amen can you see that? Yeah, and wanna... bow down to the ground before him in respect. Then they said to Elisha, Behold now, there are among your servants 50 strong men. Amen. Please, let them go and search for your master. Amen. If there may be that the Spirit of the Lord has taken him up and cast him on some mountains or into some valley, and he said, you shall not send anyone. Amen. Can you see the verse there? Le Elisha said, you shall not send anyone. But when they urged him until he was embarrassed, he said, send them. So they sent 50 men and they searched for three days but did not find Elijah. They returned to Elisha while he was staying at Jericho. And he said to them, Did I not tell you? Do not go. Then the men of the city said to Elisha, Look, this city is a pleasant place, Amen. as my Lord sees. Amen. But the water is bad and the land Amen. is barren. He said, Bring me a new jar and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then Elisha went to the spring of water and threw the salt in it and said, That says the Lord, I have purified Hallelujah. and healed these waters. There shall no longer be death or barrenness because of it. Amen. Let's pray, Father. Thank Arrapele. you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I was reading this, I said, This is very interesting story. Because it's where I began to hear a voice say, There is no more barrenness. Can you tell me about there is no more barrenness? Where we have read, there are two things that I was questioning. But when Elijah wanted to go out of, of the land of the living, everybody was prophesying that. When Elisha was following Elijah, prophets were speaking, you are following a man who's going to die. So turn back. Maybe follow that one there. And the Bible shows that Elisha never turned back. So Bible Elisha and when Elisha was not turning back, you know, until he reached a place where, you know, prophets could follow also. It's like they were beginning to understand of saying, he's not just following, let's check what will happen. And the Bible says, when they were following, the Spirit of the Lord came and took Elijah. And the anointing came upon Elisha. And what happened, what they perceived because of what Elisha did was the Spirit of the Lord that was upon Elijah. Is now upon Elisha. They saw Elisha taking the mantle and ba, hit the water. And the water separate. Elisha, 
I was asking myself why on that land on that time there was barrenness was because the first thing was a man of God that was there on that time, everybody was saying, he's going. No one could take the word from him. Because everybody will say, no, the man of God is going. There was the second question to some people. Okay, if he's going, who's going to feed his shoes. Automatically they had expectations of what they thought of. But when this thing happened, they could not believe this. The Bible says, now after the power of God or the spirit of the Lord has come upon Elisha, still they could not believe Elisha. This caused the land to have to be buried. This, this caused them to be buried too. After they saw the man of God that is gone, they still come to him and say, can we use our own power to search where he is? These are the people who said the spirit of Elijah is upon Elisha. But they are still searching for Elisha using their power because they said it's better we said we take the strong people among us to go and do the work. The prophet that was there on time said, no, 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 you don't need to search for Elijah, I'm around. Well, the Bible shows that when he said I'm around, they pressurize him. Bible says, he was embarrassed. He was embarrassed. He, he, he was failing to deny them. He could not convict them that he was the of, of, of that time. They went to search for days. And they come back empty. This is the time that you must know that we are here for you we don't need to search for another we are here we are here we are here so that something will happen for you right now right here so that something will happen for you right now right here I'm standing on the shoes of Elisha and say the barrenness is over this time. If you read, you realize that the Bible shows that they went and they came back. You know, I've been learning this thing that you find people leaving their church and they come back later being embarrassed, coming empty. It is happening all churches. When people think there are some people somewhere who are destined to bring miracles to them. And you find that they go away and search and they come back empty. I'm here in the position of Elisha. That hey, I told you not to go. Because I've got the mantle of Elijah. And something will happen and to you today in the name of Jesus. Jesus. That was the cause of the barrenness. In their time, they had these two reasons that the man of God is gone. And even the one they chose, even the one heaven chose, was not fitting on them. They could believe on the man for a while. They could just trust try to test him for a while and speak he's a 
man of God. But later they search for another one. Check somebody and say, hey, stop searching for another one. What you have is enough. From now on, you will bear fruit that you will remain if you believe shout out hallelujah. I was asking myself why there is barrenness in our lives. Number one, if you read 2 Peter, 2 Peter, chapter 1, 5 to 8, 1, 5 to 8, the Bible talks about the qualities that keeps you from becoming useless and unproductive. In other words, lacking those qualities, you become useless. But useless means you are there, but you, you are as good as you are not there. There, there are some people who are there, but they are as good as they are not there. I don't know if you are hearing me. There are some qualities that are written where the Bible talks about when you have love, when you follow the commandments. I don't know if you are hearing me. And when you develop and live in those qualities, you become a person that is productive. Barrenness will go. I don't know if you are hearing me. This is not the time of just occupying spaces without being visible with the results. This is the time of producing something where people will worship your God if you believe in hallelujah. We don't start with the results. We start with the qualities. We start with the qualities. There are some characters that are needed in our lives when we develop those characters that establish us to become a form of the one we are following. The results will be, will be visible all the time. I don't know if you are hearing me. Tell your neighbor, say, hey, develop qualities that are needed. Develop qualities that are expected. Number two is found in Haggai 1 verse 10. The Bible says because of sin because Haggai 1 verse 10 because of sin and disobedience heaven withhold the Jew and the earth withholds its produce sin destroys whatever we depend on you know, sin won't embarrass you. It will just destroy your surrounding. You will find that you are in a desolate place. This is the time that the rain must come. So that it rains what we depend on. There are, there are things that we need in life that must fall today by the rain from our Father God. If we believe, shout hallelujah. You know, you know when I'm here, I want to tell you, you that there are things unless they come no one will know you around this is not the time of just finishing bread this is not the time of just occupying space this is the time of becoming productive the reign of God must come tell about the rain must come I see raining coming. It's bringing cars, houses, jobs, finances, businesses. This is your time of the rain you are waiting for. I am waiting for this rain. I feel it. The clouds are gathering. I said the wind is blowing. It's blowing the way. It's blowing the sun. And, and the drop is falling. falling. And another one is falling. And another one is coming. You will testify, you testify this and you will testify another. Your testimony
testimony we won't cease when you speak one another one will come if you believe shout hallelujah it is only seen that stops the rain your surroundings becomes dried up where you stay becomes dried up you find that you have to struggle you have to move from where you are and search for solutions somewhere this is the time of establishing yourself where you are if you believe hallelujah if you read this Ezekiel 15 verse 8 Ezekiel 15 8 the Bible says I will make the land desolate because they acted unfaithfully Amen. through their idolatry can you see that unfaithfulness can challenge us and bring us to barrenness. In other words, whatever we are facing is there to check if we are going to stay in our faithfulness. What God has called us will be tested and we will face temptation that will challenge what we are called for so that we become unfaithful. We change and divert to where God has placed us. Sometimes we don't know that when we become unfaithful to God, it means we are worshipping idols. Unfaithful. Unfaithfulness is equal to disobedience. So when we become uh, people who don't hear so his word and do his word, we, we are worshipping an idol. So this is the time where we make barrenness to become fruitful. I don't know if you hear me. We change barrenness by becoming faithful to where we are, where God has placed us, we are being shaken out so that we moved out whereas God wanted us to be there. It happened in the Garden of Eden when God placed Adam and Eve Satan wanted them to come out because he knew that they would be productive where they are. We are facing what we are facing to be shaken out. Don't be shaken out. Don't be shaken out. Don't be moved out. Don't allow anything to remove you where God has placed you. This is the time of becoming productive. I'm about to be productive. I will produce something that will shock you. There are three things unto production. Number one, it's a process. There's a process that God put you before you produce what you need. In that process, you move to a positions. There's position. In the process, you must move in a position when you are needed. I don't know if you're hearing me. Check somebody say, my friend, you are in a process but be positioned. When you are positioned, there is the end. When at the end, there's a visibility of why you went. Why you went why you went to the process. You are facing a process that people, when they look at you, they question you. Don't worry, in that process, it's a process of preparation. A process of being challenged. A process of tough times. But there is the end. You are looking at me. I'm looking at the end. I'm going on the end where you will see the fruits that I'm producing. Shake somebody and say, hey, I've been positioned by the Lord. You can go to America. You can go to Asia. You will find me here because it's God who placed me where I am. I've been positioned by the Lord. Even when the situation comes, I won't be like the wicked because the wicked 
said they can be taken by the wind they are like the chaffs when the wind blows they are taken from where from one place to another I am here to tell you that I have been positioned by the Lord check somebody the head I am facing trouble but I have been positioned by the Lord I am facing shame but I have been positioned by the Lord don't compete me with another I have been positioned by the Lord there is a time that has been set for me that time it will be the end when I come out everybody will desire what I am producing I see someone here who has been waiting for today to come out and produce something that people will wonder if you believe if you are the one say I am I'm here to tell you no more barrenness. No more. No more barrenness. Can I tell you this? People are looking at you, judging you by what you are having. This is the time to overtake them. They never understood you. When you have got nothing, they will never understand you when you have got everything. This is the time to take over and overtake and live on the other side. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Shake somebody and say, my friend, don't judge me by my situation. I'm overtaking someone. Why? Because God is destroying my paradise. Don't judge me by my paradise. I can produce the best. Don't judge me by my failure. I can produce the best. Don't judge me by my shame. I can produce the best. I'm here to tell you what I'm going to produce. What you're going to produce will shame your enemies. Will shame your neighbors. Will shame people around you. It is your time to produce. It is your time to give birth. It is your time to show off. It is your time to change the decision of what they are saying about your life because God is on your side. It's not the time of nursing violence. It is the time of giving birth. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Say yeah, hallelujah. Say yeah, hallelujah. Who have been rejected, and I'm here to tell you that your God is up to something today. You are proud to do things that will make them to wonder. You are proud. You are proud. Say something that is true. I'm a proud. Gone are the days that people can speak about you because of your failure. Gone are the days that people can reject you because of the past. Gone are the days that people can talk about you because of the mistakes that you have committed. This is the time of giving birth to something. Barrenness is over. Barrenness is over. Barrenness is over. Barrenness is over. Paranus is over. Paranus is over. Paranus is over. Paranus is over. I can't depend on people forever. I can't look on people forever. I can't live my death forever. Paradise is over. Check somebody say, hey, Paradise is over. Paradise is over. Can you tell something, people? Paradise. You are over. You are over. You are over. Tell several people. You are over. 
Arrête. Arrête. Hey. Assez par main, c'est ça. Oh, c'est toi l'on fait dire. Assez par main. Quel est-ce que tu as l'air Assez ça. Oh, c'est toi l'on fait dire. 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 Assez ça. Even Elijah. How will it? When the, 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 the brook becomes dried up. Go say, no, 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 no. My servant can't die here. I prepare some people. I prepare some people. He searched. He went to Sido. I'm talking about God. He went to Sido. In Zarabeth. He prepared a widow. And say, hey, I've got someone who believes in me. He must eat from your house. Because where he is, it's dry. And after he prepared, he come and say, hey, Elijah, barrenness is over. Rise up from here. I have prepared someone. And he went there. When he reached there, he found small food. It was multiplied. I'm here to tell you the small things are going to be multiplied. I said the small things are going to be multiplied. I said you are the one. Barrenness is over. Sit down. Glory to God. If you read Genesis 30, you read verse 22. Verse 22. The Bible says God heard the prayers of Rachel. And there are two things. A son was born who was called Joseph. Two things was eradicated. Were, were eradicated. Number one was disgrace and humiliation. Rachel said to God, You have taken away my disgrace and humiliation. Because she was the first woman in the house who was loved. I'm not saying Mary loved it. But though she was loved, she could not produce the expected. There was a delay and people began to speak. Though you were loved, look at yourself. Sometimes when you, you are loved in the Lord, sometimes God delays things for a purpose. It's not because God is not aware of someone's situation. It's because you were loved. You were loved. That's why there's a delay. Otherwise, if you were loved and things happen so quick, people will stand and say you were loved. They won't see God in your life. And the Bible says she experienced humiliation. She experienced disgrace. There are some people when things are not happening, they disgrace you. They humiliate you. Not knowing that there's a time of the living God. There's a, there's a time of the living God. There's a time of the living God. That time will never pass. So when it happens, the Bible says she called her son Joseph. Meaning that he will add another one. In other words, Rachel, by seeing 
seen Joseph, she knew that another one was coming. There are some people who are here. They have been delayed for a while. When you see number one, don't focus on number one. There is another one that is coming. What I have testified about, there is another one. I am seeing another one. Can you tell them, I see another one? When you testify a car, another one is coming. Joseph. Joseph. Joseph means another one. Another one. I see another one. In your life. Another house. Another house. Another business. Another promotion. promotion. Listen. This is the time when people have to know and fear your God. I don't know if you are hearing me. I was wondering what is it that people were saying when they saw this Rachel become pregnant. I don't know if you are hearing me. And the boy was born. I was just wondering. And from there, they said she gave birth to a boy they ask what is the name of the boy they say the boy is called another one is coming you know there's a time that you must prove your levels in life that you drive a car by the expectation of the look when people judge they see that there is another one that is coming you are not just trying you are not just trying I say I see another one you are not just trying to do what you are doing I don't know if you are hearing me check somebody say hey there is another one what I have is called another one. And another one is coming. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Shake somebody say, my friend. Another one is coming. Look at Deuteronomy 7. Deuteronomy 7. 12 to 15. Thank you, Jesus. 10 to 15. There's only one statement I want to talk about. There. I want to read it close there. Deuteronomy 7. Deuteronomy 7. Thank you, Jesus. Are you there? Little From 12 to 15. Can I read for you? Then it shall come about because you listen to these judgments and keep and do them. Amen. That the Lord your God will keep you, will keep with you the covenant and the loving kindness, which Amen. is sure to your fathers. Amen. He will love you. Amen. And bless you. I will show you. And multiply you. I will you will also bless the fruit of your womb. And the fruit of your land. Amen. Your Amen. grain, your new wine, and Amen. your oil. The offspring of your cattle and the young of your flock in the land which you showed to your forefathers Amen. to give. You shall be blessed above all all people. Hallelujah. Can you see that verse there? Yeah, mm -hmm. There will be no male or female barren <inaudible> among <inaudible> you or among your cattle. <inaudible> the Lord will take away from you all sickness <inaudible> and he will give not subject to you you to any of the harmful disease of <inaudible> Egypt. Look at this. But he will impose them to all those who hate you. The Lord will take your sickness and uh -huh. give them to your enemies. Have you ever heard something like that? This is not back to sender. This is referring to the people who hate you. Sometimes you must check at the distant people who hate you. What they are experiencing is what you were supposed to be experiencing. I don't know if you are hearing me. The Lord will take the sickness from them, from you, and give them 
and he will multiply you and make you blessed above all of them. There's a competition here. I said there's a competition here. You are are supposed to be better than you, the one who hates you. Listen, he who hates you cannot only be an enemy. Some people, they just look at you and they hate you. But they need to possess the negatives you are supposed to be receiving. This is the time where God wants to multiply you. I don't know if you are hearing me. Can you look at that verse again? I just want us to look at this verse. He said, especially 14, he says, you shall be blessed Above all people. You hear that verse? It's a, you shall be what? Be blessed, blessed above what? Blessing that, is, that they don't start outside. They start inside you. When you are different with them inside, you'll be different with them outside. I don't know if you're hearing me. Okay, look at that verse again. Verse 15. The Lord will take away from you all sickness. He will not subject you to any of the harmful diseases of Egypt which you have known. But he will impose them on all those who hate you. I don't know if you are hearing me. So this is the time of taking your stand to produce. This is the time of becoming productive. Check somebody say my friend. Ask your neighbor say my friend. This is the time of breaking barrenness. You become above everybody. Not everybody around you. Where God has placed you, you you become above. Can you tell about this year? I'm growing up. And I'm flying higher. To be above. But when you see people in competition, pray for them. I don't know if you're hearing me. Because even if they try, they won't be like you. You're on your assignment. I've been positioned. And I'm productive. Mm. And this is your year. Yes. This is my year of producing the well, best. This is your year. Shake somebody and say, hey, can you produce something? Stop complaining. It's a time of giving birth. Can you stand up? Let's give birth to something. Let's give birth to something. Say you barrenness. Say you barrenness. Say today is your last day. Today is your last day. Today I give birth to something. Can you tell God what you are you want to give birth to? Tell God wherever you are. If you are watching, tell God. Tell God now. Just tell God I want to give birth to something. Mention it wherever you are. Don't compete. Be yourself. Give birth. Give birth wherever you are. Barrenness is over. Barrenness is over. Barrenness is over. over. Wherever you are. Say it. Speak it out. Say it. Speak it out. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Speak louder. Let your neighbor hear you. Let your neighbor hear you. Say it. Say it. Let there be a noise. When you break barrenness, there's a noise of giving birth. Let there be a noise. Let there be a noise. Wherever you are watching, there's a noise. Let me hear a noise. Wherever you are, let there be a noise.
Let there be a noise. I can hear you. Let there be a noise. Of breaking through. Of breaking through. Of breaking through. Of breaking through. Let there be a noise. Thank you, Jesus. The noise is still down. The noise is still down. If you are watching, wherever you are, Breakthrough is your life. Breakthrough is your time to break through. It is your time of breakthrough. It is your time of breakthrough. Break. In Jesus' name. Amen.